Frank Gallo. So we'll be starting our program shortly, so if you could just take your seats, we'll be starting the video in one moment. We are running a program driven and for young people that is different from anything else in the country. I think getting people to vote and getting them out there, getting them civically engaged is one of the hugest driving factors. Before I was very like neutral, but then once I got involved with the Korean Resource Center, I was like, this stuff is actually really important to me and I realized that I could actually do something about it. Some people start out not caring about politics, and then they stick with this program. They come out and now they can passionately speak about criminal justice or you know inequalities amongst class and all these amazing nuanced ideas that you never thought that you would be able to talk about. I just kind of like dive right into politics by doing this work. Um, it actually really matters to me. You see a bunch of things happen to people of color communities, and you think, man, this really sucks, but what can I do to help? When I first started doing this work, I had no real knowledge of just voting in general. I have you registered to vote yet? Awesome. Thank you. We're on our last day of our voter registration after a 9 week campaign, and so we want to make sure that uh, we're registering as many people as possible today. This is one of the biggest voter reg campaigns that OC has seen. The whole fact that um, we're really still pushing for the youth vote goes to show that you know, people aren't engaging youth, even as college students. You're officially registered to vote? Well, I'm actually really excited that we reached our goal because when we first started, we had only about 400 people registered to vote. Getting 6,100 people in the past two months is pretty exciting. It shows that like we can do a lot if we just put our like minds to it. I remember thinking constantly, like, I want to be able to do more as a Korean American to really like, learn about my culture, learn about my history, and to really pass that on to Korean Americans and to feel that as like an identity. how to build power instead of just simply serving to address a small problem. Now that I do this work, like, I didn't know the importance of like these propositions and how much it can affect like our community. A lot of things that we've been doing mostly centers around the civic engagement with youth. We've gone to a lot of different campuses within Orange County to do stuff like voter registration. And now that the deadline for registration is over, we've just been phone banking and seeing what the community feels about upcoming up propositions that mean a lot to our organization. Property 5, that was the tax extension for people who make over a quarter million dollars a year, and that money is going to be reinvested into public education. Do you know if you're going to be voting yes for Property 5? We help people build campaigns. This program is driven based on young people's creativity. Thank you so much for the appreciate it. We sure talk soon. It's Halloween today, so we're all dressed up in costume. We've got baskets of candy. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going to all the houses and really stopping by giving them candy, as well as voter guides, and then identifying them to see like how they're going to be voting on Prop 55, 56, and 57. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, we need to probably the last campus for a very special event for the Yeah, you go ahead. We're actually talking to voters today about the upcoming election and the voter rate. Can you guys talk about the important cost of the state of Dallas? We're taking a series of voters right now uh, to people who are interested in making it, uh, an informed vote with something in Thank you so much for your time. So today is November 8th, it's election day, it's the last day to vote. We're here boothing at UC 
DCI, making sure everyone knows where their polling location is, handing out our free voter guides, and answering any questions that anyone has. Hi, have y'all voted yet? Awesome. Have a nice day. Our best bet is going to be like Korean American, API youth, as well as like Korean, Korean American seniors, and to make sure that they all get on the vote, that they know how to vote, on the ballot. A lot of people say like, oh, my vote doesn't really count, especially towards president, the electoral college and such. But then I tell them, you know, there are 17 different propositions on the ballot this year. There are lots of things you can vote for. And I think that kind of changes their perspective on things when I tell them what they can vote for, like things like education. They're like, oh yeah, I think that's very important. And then most of the time, sway people to go out and vote. While moving here, we're also texting our voters, and I've been texting 500 people today, and most of them have already voted, so that's a good sign. How do we disrupt systemic things from challenging our lives every day? Uh, how do we fight for our parents who might not have status? I think it's so important for young people to learn these skills so that we can change that. We're literally changing the fact of their day of what one county should be. And that for me the most important fact of what is between that matters. So to reintroduce myself, my name is Minji Chang, and we wanted to welcome you to the 34th annual KRC and Nakasa Gala. Uh, so my background is that I am the executive director of an organization called Collaboration, Collaboration with a K, uh, and we, we discover, connect, and elevate Asian American Pacific Islander artists, and I myself as an actor. And this is Green Sloan, who is my Korean-speaking co MC. <laughs> 네, 저희 어, 오늘 34주년 민족학교 그리고 미교협 어, 기금 마찬 모금 행사에 오신 여러분 정말 환영합니다. 제 이름은 손그린이고요. 제 옆에 있으신 오, 조금 더 크게. 네, 저제 이름 손그린이고요. 그리고 제 옆에 계신 분은 장민지 씨죠. 장민지 씨 어, 아시는지 모르겠는데요. 이분 좀 꽤나 유명하신 분이에요. TV 그 비디오 영상. 버스피드나 이런 데서도 보셨을 수도 있으시고요. 이번에 또 MC 호스트 하시고 또 팟캐스트도 하세요. 팟캐스트 제목이 뭐라고 하셨죠? What's the name of the title of the podcast that they run? Collabcast and first of all. 시간 있으시면 들어보시고요. 어, 저희가 오늘 저희가 오늘, <웃음> 오늘 다 같이 즐겁게 어, 시간을 보내는 자리를 맞이할 거니까요. 와, 가, 열린 마음으로. We're so glad to have you all here together in this beautiful place with these beautiful centerpieces which we're about to inform you about um, in our silent auction. We're here to celebrate KRC and Akasek's accomplishments and prepare for the work ahead of us all together. And none of these achievements would be able to be uh, done without all of you. You guys are our community members, our leaders, and our partners. So we thank you so much for spending this evening with us. 네, 오늘 저희가 만난 자리의 이유는 저희가 그동안 해왔던 일들을 어, 같이 성찰하고 또 앞으로 갈, 나가야 할 그런 계획들을 같이 세우고 어, 그런 의미를 가지고 다 저희가 같이 모였는데요. 저희들의 성과는 여기 계신 여러분들, 여기 커뮤니티 멤버들, 그리고 지도자분들 이 없었으면 저희의 성과는 불가능했을 것 같아요. 그래서 오늘 오신 여러분들 정말 감사드립니다. to acknowledge some of the sponsors because the sponsors, uh, without their help and without their resources, we would not be able to have this evening tonight. So we just ask that you hold your applause to the end because we have several sponsors to acknowledge and we just want to make sure that they all get heard and acknowledged in this upcoming shout out. So a special thank you to the 
시간을 가질 텐데요. 저희가 박수는 아무리 치고 싶어도 일단 이름 호명이 다된 후에 쳐주시면 정말 감사하겠습니다. So we want to give a special thank you to the Los Angeles County Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, to Paul Song, the National Education Association, the Service Employees International Union, Hyunwoo Shin, Asian Americans Advancing Justice LA, Black Youth Project 100, Fox Rothschild LLP, Stephen K. Kurumada and Julie Kyujuli Kurumada, Joanne Lee. Felix Lim, Angela O, oh, Service Employees International Union Local 2015, Imbo Shim, UFCW 770, and Zhang Yu. Please join us in thanking these sponsors for their wonderful help. We also want to deeply thank uh, our host committee members and honorary host committee members for your support of KRC and NACASEC. We could not do this without you. 어, 더불어서 오늘 이 행사를 있게 만들어주신 저희 만찬준비위원회 그리고 명예만찬위원회 분들도 정말 감사드립니다. 박수 한번 더 칠까요? resources for KRC and Nakasex work in the coming year. We are really fortunate to have some incredible silent auction items donated. Did everybody get a chance to see the silent auction outside? Pretty crazy, right? We got Airbnb vouchers, we have Southwest flights, we have Disneyland tickets, a whole lot of wine, and we have these beautiful orchid centerpieces that you guys see on your tables right in front of you. The orchid centerpieces are actually for auction as well. So we wanted you guys to make sure that you stop by that auction table to make your bid because that will be closing at 7.30 p.m. And the auction for the centerpieces are actually on the table in front of you. There's a slip of paper and the bids start at $40. The orchids themselves are actually valued at $75. So make your bids because at the end of the night, whoever has the highest bid can take the orchid and the slip of paper to the registration table to claim your prize. 저희가 이 단체들이 정말 멋진 일들을 하잖아요. 근데 이 멋진 일들을 하려면 정말 많은 돈과 또 돈이 필요한데 어 밖에 보셨던 것처럼 저희가 사이렌 옵션을 하고 있어요. 저희가 경매를 하고 있는데 또 보셨을지 모르겠지만 정말 좋은 상품들이 많아요. 디즈니랜드 좋아하시는 분도 있으실 거고 또 와인 좋아하시는 분들도 있을 거고 또 에어비앤비나 정말 어 좋은 상품들이 많은데 한번 보시고 여기 꼭안 앉아 계셔도 되거든요. 좀어좀 어, 엉덩이 힘들 좀 풀고 이래야 되니까 목사가 일어나시고 밖에 나가서 좀 보시고 다시 들어오셔도 돼요. 저희가 이게 일곱 시 반에 마감하니까 나가서 이 보시고 이름 적어 주시면 되고요. 그리고 여기 그 테이블 안에 있는 예쁜 난이 있잖아요. 왜 그러 그러잖아요. 뭐 만찬이나 아니면 결혼식 가면 이거 꽃을 누가 가져가나 막 엄청 싸우. 일들이 많은데 저희가 그거를 그래서 어, 솔루션을 드렸습니다. 이 난도 어, 저희가 경매에 붙이는 건데요. 그 이, 저희가 40불에 부터 시작하는 건데요. 원래는 75불짜리예요. 그래서 여기 40불인데 집에 가져가셔서 매일 보시면서 아나 오늘 좋은 일 했었지? 이러면서 계속 자기 어, 리마인드 해주시고 그러면 좋을 것 같네요. One last thing I forgot to mention earlier that all the proceeds from the silent auction bid, including the orchid centerpieces, those proceeds will be used to support KRC and all the Nakasa campaigns and activities. So this is all going straight back into these organizations. So please do make your bids by 7:30. We now have the pleasure of introducing Nakasa and KRC's board chairs, Wan Mo Kang and David Song. 이제 이상인 강만모씨와 대비 송씨를 소개하겠습니다. 박수로 맞이해주세요. 제가 먼저 우리말로 환영해 말씀드리겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 다시 한번 안녕하세요. 여러분 고맙습니다. 어, 미주한인봉사교육단체 협의회 낙가석의 모든 스태프와 인사들을 대표해서 오늘 참석해 주신 모든 분들께 진심으로 환영의 인사를 드립니다. 이번 34차 연례반찬의 타이틀 어, From Root 
추후하고 가 말해주듯이 저희들은 34년 동포사의 밑바닥에 뿌리를 내리면서 시작했습니다. 동포사의 간단히 뿌리를 내리는 데서부터 시작해 오늘 이 성숙한 34살 청년의 나이에 이르렀습니다. 어떤 비바람이 몰아쳐도 쉽게 흔들리지 않는 뿌리 깊은 나무가 되었습니다. 이제 우리가 뿌리 내렸던 한인 동포 사이를 넘어 모든 아시안계 미인들과 함께하며 그들을 대변하는 단체로 거듭나고 있습니다. 미국의 수많은 지역사의 단체들이 있지만 그들과 크게 차별하는 특징을 저희 남가색은 갖고 있습니다. 한세 가지만 말씀드리겠습니다. 로컬 지역사의 뿌리를 내리는 마당지 커뮤니티 센터로부터 시작해서 전국적인 연결망을 걷는 전국 조직으로 성장해 로컬과 내셔널이 서로 끌어주고 이루어주며 일하고 잘 연결되어 있습니다. 이로 인해 물론 일을 더 효과적으로 잘 할수 있습니다. 다른 단체들하고는 많이 구별되는 우리만의 특징입니다. 두 번째로는 소수민족, 여성, 노년, 저소득층 등 도움을 필요로 하는 사람들을 돕고 대변하는 역할을 나서서 맡아 하고 있습니다. 또 흑인과 하소수민족들을 형제처럼 대하며 강력한 연대와 유대관계를 맺으며 일하고 있습니다. 우리 한인 등부 사이의 대표적인 인권, 인권운동 전국단체인 것입니다. 이 역시 상당히 다른 단체도 없고 구별될 수 있는 우리만의 자랑입니다. 마지막으로 여기 많이 와 계신 우리 어, 이, 그 연세 드신 어, 노년층들 많이 계십니다. 이렇게 1세와 1.5세 그리고 우리말이 속출은 2세가 함께 어우러져서 일하는 제너레이션이 함께 모여서 함께 일하고 있는 멀티 제너레이셔널 오가네이션이 우리만의 또 특징이라고 하겠습니다. 많은 지역사회 단체들이 이러한 제너레이션 간의 화합과 같이 일하는 것을 제대로 하지 못하는 것을 우리 보아오고 있지만 이 역시 우리들의 큰 자랑이 아닐 수 없습니다. 지금까지 이 모든 성과는 여기 계신 여러분들의 참여와 도움이 있었기 때문에 가능했습니다. 정말 다시 한번 진심으로 감사드립니다. 이제 뿌리를 내린 데 이어 모두가 존중받고 공정하게 살아가는 사회를 만드는 변화와 변혁의 길에 저희 낙교석이 앞장서려고 합니다. From Roots to Power 이 쉽지 않은 길에 여러분, 여러분의 계속되는 성함과 참여를 부탁드립니다. 즐거운 만찬 시간이 되길 바랍니다. 감사합니다. Hello everyone, my name is David K. Song, I'm the board chair of the Korean Resource Center, and I wanted to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, it's the 34th anniversary, or 34th annual uh, KRC fundraiser, and we're doing this in collaboration with Nakasek, and the fact that people were able to come out on Thursday uh, is uh, something that's really heartening for us in our work. Um, over the past year, you'll know that we've done together um, a lot of work around political advocacy, uh, voter drives. We've done a lot of work around affordable housing for seniors. And this is just a small piece of what we hopefully you know, want to do going forward into the future. And, you know, 2017 has been uh, a rather challenging year. And I was speaking for myself. Sometimes you know, I wake up in the morning, I'm a little anxious, um, loathing the day. It's because I have two kids, and uh, they won't stay asleep. And sometimes they like to come out and, uh, and wake, wake me up that much earlier. But then, that's also where, for me, the new cycle begins at that point, at like 5.30 in the morning. And in times like that, where I think there's been a lot of uh, you know, tectonic shifts in the political landscape, 
uh, especially in the nonprofit world where we always feel like sometimes this work is, uh, you know, it, it's already challenging because there's like, more, more of these problems and obstacles that present themselves. Uh, I, I find it uh, rather inspirational that at a moment like this, we can actually honor some of the awardees that we have. And it's testament that rather than lament what could have been or what's happening now, we kind of draw inspiration from there and realize that this is how we can, you know, actively resist, resist going forward. So uh, I just like to end on that note. 2018, um, I think there's a lot of things that we could be doing. So uh, your support here only means that much more. And um, thank you for, for everything. And I'd like, I'd like to uh, introduce our first guest speaker. Uh, this is Don Howard. Uh, Don Howard is the uh, President and Chief Executive Officer of the James Irvine Foundation. Uh, he's led the Foundation's recent transition to a focus on expanding economic and political opportunity for working Californians who are struggling with poverty. He's also written, spoken, and taught classes on issues of philanthropic uh, strategy, nonprofit management and funding, and social entrepreneurship. He's an activist around HIV and other health related issues, and in that capacity has served on a number of advisory groups. So, a, round, a warm round of applause for Don Howard. And thank you all for inviting me. It's really a pleasure to be here. The James Irvine Foundation is a longtime supporter of the Korean Resource Center's civic engagement work. On behalf of Irvine, I'm honored to be here. And I'm honored to recognize the Korean American and broader Asian American community, a major cultural and economic force that contributes to the vibrancy and strength of our communities. Like all of you, I am deeply troubled by the divisive rhetoric and actions coming out of Washington. The attacks on immigrant communities are heartbreaking. Families who have come here for a better life are being torn apart. People are living in fear every day. Despite those daunting conditions, KRC continues to lead to deliver critical services to the community, and that's why I'm so grateful to be with you tonight to celebrate their work. As all of you know, their efforts are more important than ever. KRC remains an inspiration when we need it most. Thank you. We at Irvine are inspired by KRC's impressive track record of building power with those who often don't have a seat at the table. In 2016 alone, KRC contacted more than 30,000 Asian American voters in California to encourage them to vote. <laughs> KRC volunteers secured close to 8,000 new voter registrations. And This is critical because voting rates are especially low in API communities when compared to other groups because of a range of various barriers. Let me just say the young people in that video were super inspired. KRC also played a leadership role in changing the city of Fullerton's at-large election system to a district-based election system. The new system will provide more opportunities for candidates of color and will better reflect the community which can increase voter turnout. And that's not all they've done. KRC's Immigrant Rights Project mobilized staff and volunteers to advocate for DACA. The project also offered legal services for community members assisting with the completion of more than 2,000 applications for nationalization, DACA, and DACA renewals, as well as green card renewals. So what does all of this mean? It's, it adds up to KRC making our democracy more representative of California's diverse communities. It adds up to developing grassroots community leaders and ensuring that low-income, API, immigrant, and people of color communities have the power to shape the policies that affect their lives and the lives of their families. Organizations like KRC make it possible for us at Irvine to fulfill our mission. After I became Irvine's CEO in 2015, I traveled across the state to hear from civic, business, nonprofit, and community leaders about the challenges and opportunities facing our state.
then in 2016, we spoke directly to over 500 Californians from across the state who work hard every day and find themselves living on the brink of poverty. What we heard over and over is that the California dream feels farther and farther out of reach. Too many of our fellow Californians are struggling, piecing together jobs and paychecks that don't cover the high cost of living in our state. And just getting by takes so much time and effort that they have little opportunity to participate in their communities and have a voice in the policies that affect their lives. That's why in 2016, Irvine set new goals for our grant funding. We seek to expand economic and political opportunity for working Californians who are struggling with poverty. By our count, that's one in three of our fellow Californians. We believe that every Californian should have the chance to be financially self-sufficient, as well as the chance to be heard and counted in the political process. We're also continuing our long-standing commitment to ensuring that California's immigrant communities have access to economic, educational, and political opportunities. Over the last year, we've expanded our support for immigrant communities to address new threats with a special focus on supporting API communities. Let me close by returning to the theme of tonight's gala. KRC and leaders like all of you in this room are building a movement for change. We believe in you and what you will accomplish because we see the progress you're making and it reminds us that real change is possible. Thank you to the Korean Resource Center and to all of you for your leadership and thanks for having me here tonight.
They are the people who gave me the space to grow and all the knowledge and opportunities to even become the activist I am today. But not just Hanu Center, but Fish, the space, and all of its members, it's such a great space. And the members there are the ones who support me and challenge me, and I basically consider them a second family. Uh, they're all amazing activists who work really hard to come together and do amazing things while also taking care of one another. And it just shows that youth activism is so important because it shows that kids, we, as youth, we understand what's happening in the world. We realize how messed up everything is. And we're not just gonna let some old people tell us what we can do.
because their fight is our fight, and it's hard these days with number 45, let me just say. Very hard right now. So, but I also want to recognize the leadership and space you have provided for not only undocumented Korean youth, but other undocumented youth to organize and raise their voices in fighting for the rights of undocumented immigrant families and workers on the whole. So I'm humbled to be sharing the stage with Don Howard from the Irving, from the James Irving Foundation, and sharing the stage with the other honorees tonight. Jeanette Vasquez, Fullerton Board School, uh, School Board member, who continues to advocate for quality public education. Samira Haki, a youth activist, who has been inspired by her mentors at the Hana Center in Chicago, that it isn't enough to be an activist, but to be a youth organizer and continue mobilizing and building power for young people. I'm honored to share the stage with our dreamers, Hoon Joon Kim and Eric Yang, who are committed to speak out and are fearless, even with the threat of deportation. I am so honored to share this stage. And I'm also, oh, there goes the phone. I'm also honored to share this stage with one of my personal sheroes, Auntie Maxine, Maxine Waters. So sister, I just want to say, I remember you back in your state legislative days in California. You raised hell then, you told it like it is, you still continue to tell it like it is, and you inspire me every day. Because you take on that lying, racist, despicable person who calls himself the president and the rest of those Washington, D.C. swamp guys. So I salute you, sister. That's right. That's right. This is the thing you can tell everybody. Right? But I just want you to know that you have had our backs for many, many years, and you, we will have your back, right? We are gonna fight right alongside you. So I'm really honored to share this stage with an awesome group of Hellraisers for social, economic, and immigrant justice. And I'd be remiss if I did not recognize our SEIU members that are here with us today. because it was one of the first group of workers that I organized right here in South Central LA, way back then, and then went on to coordinate the organizing drives of home care workers in San Francisco, Alameda County, and Santa Clara County. So they are very close to my heart. And I also want to acknowledge a woman who some of you may know, but someone who was a leader here in SEIU in Los Angeles, who had the tenacity and the vision that home care workers needed to come out of the shadows, they needed to have a voice, they needed to be organized into a union so that the public and elected leaders became aware of the important work that they provide every day. And that woman is Ophelia McFadden, who's passed on, God rest her soul. And I want to thank our SEIG leaders that have continued that fight with home care workers. Alfonso Butler, who has continued that fight and will continue to organize long-term care workers. So a little bit about my story. I've been an SEIU member for a long time. I grew up with SEIU. I started in the union in 1977 as a registered nurse at San Francisco General Hospital. And then I was asked, don't you want to like organize some more, Louisa? Take a leave of absence for a year. So I did that. That was in 1990, and I never looked back. So I had the opportunity not only to develop my leadership, but also to be able to build our union to be one of the largest unions in Northern California and the largest healthcare union. So 
That was in the early days of work, so now that I'm a national officer, let me share with you some of the work that I'm doing now. I am responsible for developing and building the SEIU Civic Engagement Program and Leadership Program. I am responsible for leading the work on environmental justice and climate justice. I'm responsible for building our Millennial Program, and I'm very honored to do that work. And it's really hard to do that under these times. But for API and the civic engagement work that we're doing here, it's not enough. It's just not enough work that SEIU can do by its own. We have to do it in partnership with the Asian community because we can't do it alone. But some of the research has shown that we are a diverse community. We speak 42 different languages. And we have to have the leadership of our API community to be able to reach out not only into their membership, but also into the broader community. So according to the last census, APIs total 21 million as of July 1st, 2015. That is up 3.4% since 2014. We used to be less than a million in number before 1965. And it's estimated that we will reach 5% of voters nationally by 2025 and 10% of voters by 2044. Sisters and brothers, we can be the deciding factor in key races at the local, state, and federal level. And I urge every single one of you to make our voice count and make sure you get out to vote. Not only this year, we've got elections this year, but definitely in 2018 and beyond. Because we have to have a seat at the table, we have to raise our issues and hold those elected officials accountable. They can't just promise us that they'll do the work. We have to make sure that they actually carry it out. Because we're the ones knocking on the doors, we're the ones phone banking, and it's important that all of us do that. So, for the nine and a half months since that crazy man in D.C. has been uh, trying to leave this country, he says, uh, it has been really, really hard. Very hard. I don't know how people in Washington, D.C. can stand it, and I'm lucky that I don't have a TV in Washington, D.C. because I think I would break that TV, right? Because they start in the morning, and then the afternoon, it's something else, and by the evening, it's all crazy again. So, SEIU members and elected leaders are going to fight every step of the way. We have to get rid of him. We have to elect the right people so that we can change this country. And we have to fight and organize for the right for workers to organize into a union and to fight for a minimum wage of $15 an hour so that families can thrive. We have to fight and organize for the right to take a knee to protest the killing of young black men and unpunished police violence and the institutionalized racism that exists in this country. We have to fight and organize for an environment where we can drink water and not worry about whether or not it's going to harm our families. We have to fight to make sure that we have clean air to breathe so that our children don't grow up with asthma. We have to fight and organize for quality public education and the ability to send our children to college so that they can be future leaders of this country but not be in debt for the rest of their lives. We have to fight and organize for the right to affordable, accessible, quality health care. And we will fight and organize for comprehensive immigration reform. We will fight for the rights of immigrant workers and students who every make contributions to our society and help build our economy. So workers and their families are the backbone of our country and it is time to stand up and organize and fight like hell for a better country and we can do this together. Thank you so much.
Adele thanks Beyonce at the Grammys. So I just, I can't right now. And congratulations, thank you to Mr. Howard, and thank you to Samira. It's just incredible what you guys have done for the community. It's wonderful. Thank you. How are this year? Samira, Gulushi, 여러분 모두 성과에 감사드립니다. 아 여러분의 말씀과 너무 감동적이었어요. So I wanted to just take a second to acknowledge that dinner is being served, or you guys are, some of you are already eating, so we hope that you enjoy it. Um, please do not forget about that silent auction again, all the proceeds that we raised from the silent auction outside and on the uh, centerpieces will go back straight to KRC and Nakasai's board, and that closes at 7.30, which is very, very soon. And um, also take a minute to appreciate the centerpieces and bid on those. 어 이제 저녁을 드실 시간인데요. 정말 맛있게 드셨으면 좋겠어요. 그리고 제가 아까 여기 옆에서 보는데 안 일어나시는 분들이 있어요. 제가 말했잖아요. 스트레칭 하시면서 바깥에 좀 나가셔서 예쁜 경품도 보시고 또 경매도 하시고 그리고 여기 세트키스 예쁘 너무 예쁘지 않아요? 꽃이? 그것도 한번 보시고 어, 사가시면 정말 좋을 것 같아요. 그 꽃을 사가는 방법은요. 그 케이블마다 그 무슨 종이 하나가 있어요. 종이에다가 자기 이름 적으시면은 나중에 그 최고 경매 적으신 분들이 이기는 건데요. 그 종이를 레지스트레이션 테이블에 가져가셔서 지불하시고 꽃을 가져가시면 됩니다. I feel like I need to translate for my co-host. She's saying all these beautiful things in Korean. What she suggested is for several of you that have not gotten up from your seats yet, she suggested taking a little stretch. You know, walking outside for the last few minutes of the silent auction because that will be closing soon. So I just want to say that because she said it so charmingly and I just said it very directly. But now we're going to show you a short video of the 22 day round the clock action that KRC, Nakasek, and the HANA Center coordinated in front of the White House to defend DACA and TPS. So please pay attention, we'll be playing that video shortly. 어 이제 저희가 비디오 하나를 볼 텐데요. 어 이거는 저희 민족학교 또 민주혁 그리고 하나 센터에서 정말 열심히 불체비아로 22일간 동안 워싱턴 DC 앞에서 이제 어 서류 비자 추가 계획 프로그램과 임시 보훈 신분을 보호하기 위한 프로그램에 맞서서 싸웠죠. 저희가 어 비디오 보고 다시 돌아왔습니다.
you check the booklet, this is what it is for. So we spend a lot of money on printing, so please print it. Um, and um, we are going to keep quiet for the Dream Act. Dream Act is right now, right now is on the Senate and uh, the House. So we are going to go to DC um, 5th, November 15 and 16 to push, push as much as we can. Also, we are uh, mobilizing and organizing in OC right now. UCI and Chaos have gotten Monday to Thursday, 10 to 3 p.m. If you guys are nearby, live nearby, please swing by, you know, and stay with us and have good time with us. Right? So, uh, thank you and peace. Hello, my name is Becky Dalfour and I am the co-director of Nagasak. We're from you. We thank you so much for being here with us tonight. As many have referenced, this has been a very challenging year for immigrants, people of color, women, LGBTQ, and low-income communities. Despite this, Nagasak and our affiliates working together with all of you and many of our allies have stayed strong and have refused to be demoralized and defeated. Instead, we have participated and organized rallies, marches, legislative visits at the municipal, state, and federal levels, and national campaigns like the Dream Action to fight for justice and let this administration know that we are here to stay. One campaign I would like to highlight is the Adoptee Rights Campaign. I am one of 110,000 Korean American adoptees who was adopted by U.S. citizen parents so I could have a better life. Due to a loophole in the law, there are 35,000 adoptees, like myself, who were adopted by U.S. citizen parents, but who are struggling because they do not have U.S. citizenship. Over half of these adoptees are Korean American. NACASAC with the Adoptee Rights Campaign is organizing and advocating for the Adoptee Citizenship Act to remedy the situation. Last year, we accompanied Korean adoptee Adam Kratzer, who was deported to Korea almost a year ago, through his deportation proceedings. We hope you can support this campaign, and I leave you with this video message from Adam. Narrator dialogue, exiting narrator. Um, about one year ago today, uh, I was deported to Korea. Um, as a younger man, I always wanted to go to Korea. I always wanted to learn about where I came from. I always wanted to learn about my culture uh, that I lost. Uh, however, I have to say, uh, I didn't expect to uh, this way. As you can imagine, adjusting to life here, uh, has been pretty challenging. Um, I have to say though, um, the food is really good. <laughs> this campaign, the Adoptee Rights Campaign, or ARC, uh, and the Adoptee Citizenship Act are really important, uh, especially to people like me. Um, it gives us hope uh, that someday uh, we'll get a chance. Someday we have a chance to be with our children and our loved ones. Uh, someday we have a chance to be citizens of the country that we know. Uh, a chance to finally let the promise of adoption on it. So what we want to share now is that KRC and NACASEC, as uh, was mentioned earlier, they are calling on partners for the DREAM Act and the Adoptee Citizenship Act to pass before the end of this year. Now I think you guys would agree that that would be an amazing holiday gift, especially after the year we've had for all our communities. And in order for us to win the DREAM Act and the Adoptee Citizenship Act, we must mobilize our folks to go to Washington, D.C. several times before the end of this year. So we need your support, and on your table you will find pledge cards to support these events. So please take a look and consider making a donation. Uh, 그리고 입양인 시민권 법안을 통과를 위해서 정말 노력을 많이 할 건데요. 어 그게 저희 연말 연시 선물이 돼서 정말 좋겠네요. 그렇죠? 제 크리스마스 선물 소원이기도 하고요. 근데 이게 그냥 아침에 일어나서 딱 
되는 거 아니잖아요. 그렇죠? 저희 모두가 힘을 다합해서 또 이러한 훌륭한 단체들을 통해서 저희 목소리를 대변해주는 어, 단체들이 정말 필요한데 그분들이 이 일을 하기 위해서는 정말 많은 후원이 필요해요. 어, 그래서 지금 어, 밥을 드시고 계시지만 그 테이블 위에 어, 여기 이런 일을 후원하는 양식서가 있어요. 그래서 한번 보시고 오늘 꼭 다음은 없어요. 오늘 하시면 되세요. 네, 오늘 꼭 사인하시고 가시면 좋겠습니다. 어, 그리고 저희가 앞으로 15분 안에 경매가 마감되니까요. 어, 나가셔서 한번 둘러보시고 스트레칭 하시고 또 오셔서 또밥 드시고 어, 그리고 그 꽃도 잊지 마시고요. We are having our sign auction open for a few more minutes, so if you do want to get those bids in, please go now. But in the meantime, we'd like to introduce and welcome Dan Choi, who is a Nakasen board member, to the stage. Uh, 저희 Nakasen board member Dan Choi, 소개드리겠습니다. Good evening. My name is Dan Choi from the sunny, sunny city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, so uh, it's really my pleasure to introduce Hyunjun Kim. Hyun uh, is a person that I want to get to know about his story about. His, he was born in 1996 and came to the United States with his family when he was two years old. He spent his childhood here and then moved to Virginia when he was only in second grade. He spent his full many years here. And when his parents divorced at the age of 16, he chose to live in the United States while his mother and uh, sister went back. And he struggled with that decision, having worked for high school, and yet he still managed to graduate high school in 2014 in Annandale, Virginia. Yet at the age of 19, as an adult, he found out that the country where he spent his childhood, he spent his formative years, that he chose to live in, that he struggled in, until he was undocumented, I imagine it was quite a shock. And fortunately, he had a friend who worked with Dr. Sek and he was introduced to some of the wonderful staff members who worked with him to file his first DACA petition. And after that, it had such a great impact on him that he decided to take a role of being involved and serving the community himself. It's not that every organization, such as Dr. Sek or KRC, had, it's very rare that all organizations have such an impact on their clients, or the people that they serve. And it's not always common that the people who are served have the courage to take the next level. And so it's my great honor to present a uh, young with the work for in reaction. There is a small problem in our community that so many people 
Sony young people have access. Sony young people will rebuff current events and current issues. And not even do anything about it. Thinking that doesn't really affect them. Thinking that they don't have access to the internet. Thinking that they don't have access to the internet. Thinking that they don't have access to the internet. And that's what happened to me. Like, none of my friends really knew I was undocumented, and then they would talk about it, talk about, talk about immigration status, and think that it doesn't affect them, and they would do nothing about it. They would just brush it off, and it really did hurt me. And then when I eventually did come out and ask, told them that I was undocumented, you know, they really took action. They really supported me. They really, I really felt another connection added to their. I, that's why we could be working so important, having youth being involved in community work is so important. Because it really does change our own communities, change our homes. And that's why I believe our youth is a big Thank you. Can we give it up for one more time for John Lee Jr.? Good evening, everyone. My name is John Depeik. I'm the Orange County Director of the Korean Resource Center. And I'm so proud to be here with each and every one of you today. I am so proud to be able to introduce the next person for the Community Action Award here today at tonight's gala. My dear friend, my dear colleague, and a leader in the community, Jeanette Vasquez. To give a quick primer, Jeanette Vasquez and I met two years ago uh, at the start of the district elections fight as we fought for the rights for communities of color to be able to run and to be able to represent our proud city of Florida. And after, third, after living for nearly 30 years in Florida, there had to be for some period of time for us to be able to fight and stand together with communities that lived all across Florida for the rights for us to be able to lead. And Jeanette Vasquez could not be a prouder leader to be able to lead uh, our fight for the fight for district elections in a city that desperately needed it. As we defined what a coalition looked like, we fought for the rights as Korean Americans and Latinx communities stood together side by side to be able to fight for the rights for us to be able to lead together, to be able to run together. And as Jeanette Vasquez is now a proud school, a school board leader for the Florida School Board, I am proud to be able to, to be able to introduce my friend to the stage, Jeanette Vasquez, for a leader, for the leadership that she deserves to be recognized for and the leadership that she will continue to display in our hometown of Fortin. So Jeanette, let us please welcome Jeanette Vasquez to the stage. Just to put food on the table. 
And so now I tell them that they must advocate for themselves, their families, and their community starting now. Because one day, they will be our leaders. But today, today they are looking for us to be their advocates. When Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter, he was talking about today. And our kids are expecting us to have the courage that people like Jonathan, who along with so many other community leaders, like Kitty Jaramillo and Daniel Bravo from OVO, the KRC staff members like Rex, Isabel, all the interns and community members, parents like Alma and Jero, and students from across Orange County, so many more people have had to tear down every single brick on that wall in our fight to end economic disparity and injustice for our families in Fullerton and across Orange County. Our kids and families are looking for us to be leaders, of, the leaders of today. And tonight, I thank every single one of you for the bricks, the walls that you have helped tear down to the bridge and to the bridges we will continue building for immigrant families everywhere. So thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Duration. I'm a Nakaseg board member. Um, Nakaseg was my first job ever when I was 15 years old, and so it's, um, it taught me almost everything I know about organizing. So it's really invigorating to be in this space again. Um, in Hawaii, when we speak to an audience, we say aloha, and then the audience all says aloha. You guys want to try that? Ready? Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here today. I'm here to present the Dreamers in Action Award to Eric Yang. status while applying for colleges um, and after spending time at a community college to save money and work he went to UCI to go into business economics and got really, really involved with doing organizing for dreamers and the dream act and so he is currently working at the dream center at the UCI and he's excited to see what the future has in store for him so let's give it up for Eric Yang Good evening, everybody. Um, my first draft of this speech was 10 minutes long. Um, but they told me to cut it down to two. Because they didn't have time, but I, I cut it down to three minutes. So my name is Eric. Um, I want to thank you all so much. Um, I'm truly honored to be here today. Uh, I'm a wonderful family here. Um, and this really is amazing. Man. Receiving this award really feels a bit odd because in actuality, this award sh should be shared with everyone I can. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for JP, my KRC Orange County Director. JP has given me every opportunity to step out of my comfort zone and really grow, all because he believed in me. And I want to also thank all the members of LNS Summer 2017. I want to thank Lucy, Millie, Yenin, Jane, Vanessa, Andy, Anthony, Sarah, JJ, Jenny, Maggie, Tracy, and Tim. All for being so amazing and really great to see. Y'all more than just some interns. We grew into a family. And of course, with family, sometimes we have mom and dad. I want to thank Susan and Rex for being so patient, so understanding, and really organized. We're always ready for anything. These last few months have been such a life-changing event. I've learned so much, gained so much because of my LNS family. There's, there's one thing we do at LNS. We always end the night with, let's go around saying one word of how we're feeling at the moment. Tonight, that one word is love. I feel love at KRC. I feel love at LNS. This amazing award is a tremendous honor for me. But more so, the fact that I can brag about, my, about these people in my life 
That is the greatest honor. Thank you so much. And I'd like to thank 
Angela O oh for that very kind and generous introduction. She is someone that we all admire. She's a hard worker. She's been at it for a long time. Let's give her a big round of applause. Angela O. Oh. So ladies and gentlemen, it is such a tremendous honor to be here tonight to celebrate the work of the Korean Resource Center and the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium. For more than 30 years, these organizations have worked tirelessly to advocate for people of color, particularly Asian American and Pacific Islander communities in Southern California and all across the country. I'm delighted to be here and I'm pleased to be recognized, but I want to tell you Don Howard, who is your guest speaker this evening, is a tremendous resource and a wonderful leader and a progressive leader. Let's give Don Howard a big round of applause. All of the awardees that have been recognized here this evening are very special people because of the work that they do, of the sacrifices that they make, and the fact that they understand uh, that we have a right to participate in this country, that we are strong supporters of the democracy, and we're going to demand justice and equality. So you give our honorees here this evening a big round of applause. Lisa Blue, Community in Action Award. Jeanette Vasquez, Community in Action Award. Samira Hope, Dreamer in Action Award. Halloween. Uh, John Kim, Dreamer in Action Award. Eric Benson, Dreamer in Action Award. A big round of applause for all of our awardees here this evening. So ladies and gentlemen, whether it was organizing advocates, protesting in front of the White House, or ensuring that Korean and Pacific Islander families have the resources they need to safely integrate into this community. KRC and Nagasak are working to strengthen our democracy every day. This legacy is certainly something to be proud of. And I ask that you join me in saluting them for their terrific service. Another round of applause. And so you know that I am so delighted and humble to be the recipient of the Standing Up for Justice Award. I'm so proud to be your champion in the United States Congress. And it is my hope that my advocacy continues to make a difference in the lives of people in our community, the 43rd Congressional District that I represent, and Asian Americans all across this country. To me, Standing Up for Justice is not something one does occasionally or when it is politically expedient. Truly, standing up for justice requires diligence and unwavering commitment because the threat of unfairness, discrimination, and inequality are always present in any society. Standing up for justice is something that I know many of you are doing each and every day, and I'm so proud to stand with you. Our country, is enduring a very strange and peculiar moment in our history. The circumstances we're facing require that each citizen be relentless in the pursuit of justice. We are now faced with the most unqualified and dishonorable man to ever serve in the office of the presidency, Donald Trump. In nearly nine months, or 272 days, this president and his administration have pursued a series of racist, anti-immigrant, and in some cases, unconstitutional policies that are contrary to everything our democracy stands for. One of Donald Trump's first major actions as president was to roll out the so-called travel ban, which targeted immigrants uh, from majority Muslim countries. You may recall the heartbreaking stories of the victims, this band, children, university students, professors, doctors, seniors, and all of whom 
were denied entry into this country at no fault of their own. It was not because of something they had done. It was because of where they came from. I will never forget joining the thousands of fellow protesters at LAX who immediately rushed down to the Tom Bradley International Terminal to show our love and support for thousands of people who were being targeted by such a blatant, xenophobic, ill-conceived, and unconstitutional travel ban. We also can't forget that Donald Trump bypassed the traditional review process to pardon Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who is one of the most overt racists to recently serve in a public office. Arpaio is notorious for his cruel campaign against undocumented immigrants and was convicted of violating the constitutional rights of Latinos, stopping people based on illegal racial profiling, and detaining some of them solely on the suspicion that they were in the country illegally. Instead of disavowing our capital for his racist and unconscionable behavior, Trump pardoned him, ensuring that his ally would face no time in prison for his crimes committed against people of color and for contempt of the United States Constitution. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. Donald Trump and his Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, have continued their assaults on immigrant communities for their own political gain. This administration has proposed using taxpayer dollars to fund a senseless border wall. They have attacked sanctuary cities and states like California and continuously advocated for harsh and drastic changes to our legal immigration system. Most recently, Donald Trump and Jeff Sessions turned their attention to more than 800,000 beneficiaries of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, that is the DACA program. These are young people who came to America's children who were innocent of any wrongdoing. Often, these individuals were unaware of their immigration status. In most cases, America is the only home they have ever known. Thanks to them, they were able to come out of the shadows. They registered with the government, paid a fine, underwent background checks, enrolled in college, found the paying jobs, and unlike this dishonorable, despicable president, they even paid their fair share of taxes. However, this president and his attorney general, Callison, uprooted the dreamers' entire sense of stability, leaving them more at risk and uncertain about their futures than ever before by putting an expiration date on the DACA program. Donald Trump and Jeff Sessions' actions on DACA demonstrate a complete lack of care or compassion. None of this should come as a surprise. This is who Donald Trump is and always will be. He announced his campaign in a speech where he called Mexican immigrants rapists and criminals. He then traveled all around the country lying to his base in order to make them believe that immigrants and people of color were the cause of their plight. As Donald Trump parades across this country claiming that he and he alone will make America great again. What he really needs to understand is that immigrants to this country have already done more to make this country great than he ever will. Taking a look at the contributions of Korean Americans to the United States, over 1.7 million Korean Americans live in the United States. There are more than 333,000 in California. Many Koreans settled right here in Los Angeles. This year marks the 135th anniversary of Korean immigration to the United States. As Koreans immigrated to this country, they brought with them an exceptional drive and entrepreneurial spirit that exemplifies the American dream. Nearly half of Korean immigrants to the United States opened their own businesses. 
Spedic Various Service and Retail Specialists. According to the Los Angeles Times, Korean businesses represent at least a third and possibility half of the businesses right in our garment industry, generating at least $10 billion in annual revenues and providing 20,000 jobs. That's enough for us to big applause. More broadly, according to the Department of Commerce's Minority Business Development Agency, Asian American-owned firms generate over $500 billion in revenue. They also create 208 million jobs per year. This outstanding impact is particularly beneficial to cities such as my district, Torrance and Gardena, and all across the state of California, which have thriving Korean and Japanese American communities. That is why I say to all of those who have been affected by Trump's inhumane, reprehensible, and anti-immigrant actions, I stand with you. To the more than 200,000 DACA recipients living in California, 50,000 of whom are children who live here in LA County and will soon be eligible for DACA, I want you to know I have your back. For my also have your back. We're fighting every day to hold Donald Trump and his Republican allies on Capitol Hill accountable. And we're fighting to ensure that we pass a bipartisan fix for DACA before the clock runs out. As I close, I want you to know that I remain confident that our best days are ahead of us. This is largely due to the work of organizations like KRC and NACASAC and many others who are getting involved in the fight to protect immigrants, people of color, seniors, veterans, LGBTQ people, Americans with disabilities, and many other communities who are at risk under this president. We cannot be shut up or shut down by a racist bully. During this unprecedented period in our history, our resolve must be to continue standing up for justice, not just for some, but for all of us. So I would like to thank you and applaud you and encourage you to continue keeping your neighbors informed, organizing your communities, registering people to vote, and most importantly, showing up. The America that I know and love is more powerful than any one deplorable man and the white nationalists that he's courting from the White House. The American people understand that our diversity is our greatest strength, and we will not allow Donald Trump to destroy the very thing that has made this country the greatest nation on earth. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there are those who continue to believe that somehow he is going to become presidential, that somehow he's going to transition and be a better person than he has shown himself to be. I don't believe that. I believe, again, that this despicable and deplorable man must be removed from office. I'm calling for his impeachment. I want you to know that I truly believe that he's been in collusion with the Russians and the Kremlin and with Putin and the oligarchs of Russia and that our special counsel is going to connect the dots. It is just a matter of time before the facts will be before our eyes and even those Republicans who support him today are going to have to stand with us if they are as patriotic as they claim to be and they're going to have to join me in calling for his impeachment. In addition to collusion, he is guilty of obstruction of justice. He obstructed justice right before our very eyes when he shared classified information with the Russians in the White House. And in addition to that, his firing of COVID 
is a great indication of what we're going to learn about how he has obstructed justice. And so, whether it is collusion or obstruction of justice, or that he's violating the Constitution uh, because of the emoluments law, or whether it is because he and his family have been found just today to have retreated all of those ads that were bought on Facebook and Twitter uh, by the Russians, and we found that uh, Junior and Kushner and all of them were retreating, and so that in itself is collusion. And so I'm convinced that we can take our America back from here. The work that you're doing, the work that you're putting together for all of us in this country, the trips that you're going to make to Washington, D.C., the voice that you have created for justice and equality will reign in this country. I believe that no matter how difficult it seems at night when you go to bed, wondering what you're going to wake up to the next day, wondering what he tweeted at 3 a.m. in the morning, that after a good night's sleep, you wake up as I do, and you feel that the fight is on, and we're not going to back up, we're not going to give up, we're not going to walk away. As a matter of fact, we are woke, and we're all going to stay woke. Stay woke. A lot of trouble, a lot of 
challenges to overcome all the time. All the time, somebody along that journey, somebody always together with us, we guided us with vision, dedication, and great leadership. We call her Isadana because he was, she was founding member of KRC, founding member of NAPASEC, and founding board member, and also longest serving Isadana, board chair of both KRC and NAPASEC. Now, I want to recognize our, her nickname is Forever Isadam, Forever Body Chair. Now, she'll be always with us, even though she's not a board member anymore, it doesn't matter, always with us, and we believe she will guide us forever. When I introduce Mr. Lee, please read. KRC가 오늘날에 이르게 되었음을 감사드립니다. 감사합니다. 
The Caragon Event Sphere was a grant of grassroots mobilization that traveled from California to Texas for three weeks to defend immigrant rights. And they kept families together to resist Trump and to build momentum for the national May Day strike. KRC's Jungle Kim Bo joined this mobilization, allowing him to organize with a diverse coalition of labor, community, human rights, and other organizations. At the same time, caravanners took time to sing and dance in the community, which I am all about.
up for a group photo. We did want to do one last chant because that got, that performance got us so energized. So Green, do you want to lead us in in the in the chant, and we're all going to do this together? 저희가 또 지금 떠나면 좀 마음이 아프니까 마지막으로 한 번만 더 외치고 갈게요. 저희가 어, Yes We Can, s i s e We Can, 그리고 할수 있다 한 번을 같이 할 거예요. Okay. Yes.